Let me start by saying that the title of this video is not that accurate because to say that something is the best is subjective. So a more accurate title for this video would be my favorite handwriting apps on Windows or some pretty good handwriting apps on Windows that you should check out. The focus here is on note taking with the pen. I'm not the expert with all these apps, so if I left out any important features, it's because I'm not familiar with the app. I mean, why would one person need so many note-taking apps? All right, let's start with Microsoft OneNote. Microsoft OneNote is free and comes pre-installed with Windows OS. There are many tools for taking notes. In fact, sometimes you may have to click a few times to go into the options to find the functions you need. When it comes to handwriting, one thing I like about OneNote is you can create up to eight shortcuts for different pens and colors. There are collaboration tools. You can attach audios and videos. You can convert handwritten notes into editable text for different languages. And palm rejection works perfectly. You won't be able to write with your finger even if you want to. Syncing and backup is through Microsoft OneDrive, which is Microsoft's online cloud storage. OneDrive provides 5 gigs of free storage. I highly recommend you check out the services of Microsoft OneDrive because this can also be used to backup your whole computer for a reasonable price. So once your notes have been uploaded to the cloud, you can access your notes from Android phones and tablets, on Windows devices, and on iPads. The main downside of OneNote for me is the OneNote app is not the same on all platforms and OS, so it's only the Windows version of OneNote where you get all the features. Microsoft OneNote is definitely the first app you should check out because it's already pre-installed with Windows and it's free. If you don't like this app, of course, there are many other alternatives such as the next one that I have here, which is Evernote. The basic version of Evernote is free with certain features locked behind a paywall. The paid version starts from 8 US dollars a month, which is quite pricey. So you really need to find the features useful in order to pay that much per month. And with the basic version, there is one limitation which I find very irritating. It's this, you can only use Evernote on two devices. And technically speaking, it's not even two devices, it's two instances of the app opened. For example, I have the Evernote app opened on this tablet. If I go to evernote.com and sign in, that's considered the second device. So if I want to use Evernote on my phone now, I cannot do so. I have to sign out on the website or on this app. Evernote has many useful note-taking features that the company believes are worth paying for. There are collaboration tools. You can click PDF and web pages to your notes. It can convert handwritten notes into editable text uh, with different languages supported. There is OCR, so you can import PDF and you can do a search of the text within the PDF. And the searching function within the notes, um, it's said to be pretty good. In terms of the actual handwriting tools and features, there isn't much with Evernote. It's just these four tools and selected colors. And there is no palm rejection, so you will need to have an active stylus to provide basic palm rejection. Nable is an app for those who want a simple note-taking app. There aren't many handwriting tools and features. So there is the pen, the highlighter, eraser, selection tool, and colors with addition to add more colors. This is priced at US $10, it's a one-time purchase. The user interface, as you can see, it's very clean. It's a very simple app to use. There is text conversion. So as you write, you can see the app trying to read what you have written and the conversion is quite accurate. So if you want to convert this into editable text, you just have to double tap. The pop-up that appears while you are writing can be turned off. Sometimes you may want to turn it off so that it doesn't block other words that you have already written on top. The handwriting conversion works for many languages. There are 55 listed here. You can check out the whole list on their website. One thing I like about Nabo is it supports gestures for shortcuts. For example, if I want to delete these two words, I can simply cross them out. 
if I want to push this word down to the next line, I can just swipe down. And if I want to push it up again, it just goes up. Notice this line doesn't automatically go up, so I have to swipe up again. There are some downsides with this app as well. One downside is when your text is too long and you change it to portrait orientation, sometimes the text may flow well. However, sometimes when you turn back or when you turn any other way, the letters may jumble up, but right now it works fine for me. This app does not allow you to write across three lines, it's just not possible. So the largest you can write is across two lines. Syncing and backup is through either Dropbox or Google Drive. The next app I want to show you is Wacom Bamboo Paper. This app is more simple compared to Nable due to the lack of tools and features. This app is free to use with certain tools locked behind a paywall. If I remember correctly, they only give you two out of the six tools. And to get all these different colored covers and the lines or the grid on the paper, you have to pay as well. This app is strictly for writing. There are no text editing features. It cannot convert handwritten notes into editable text. There is no search. And the pages, they don't flow continuously. To get to the next page, you have to press this page button here to flip the page. To go back to the first page, you can press this page counter to get a preview of all the pages and tap here to go back. It doesn't even have palm rejection or pen only mode, so you have to rely on an active stylus to provide basic palm rejection. To sync and back up your pages, you need a Wacom account, which will also give you this Ink Space account, and this has 5 gigabytes of storage. Interestingly, this app is better rated compared to Evernote, which has a ton more features. I'm not sure if Wacom is still actively developing this app because all the tools and features that you saw earlier, they were there when this app was released many years ago. So I don't think the company is adding additional features. I don't think this app is great for taking copious amount of notes. This app is more suitable for taking quick notes uh, such as a shopping list, jotting down ideas, um, addresses, really short notes maybe across a few pages. The last app I want to show you is Concepts, which is one of my favorite drawing and illustration apps. This app can also be used to take notes. And this app is great for creative note taking. The app is free to use, however, tools are locked behind paywall and you may have to pay several times to unlock all the tools because there are many tools. Um, I actually like and enjoy all the tools, so I have paid for all these different brushes. This is actually a long list of brushes. Concepts is first and foremost a drawing app, so it has access to many drawing tools. You can set up to eight shortcuts here. There is also the layers palette, so you can create multiple layers to have text above colors or just switch between them. The coloring system is the Copic coloring system, so there are so many beautiful colors here. Concepts features an infinite canvas, so it's just this one page with unlimited size. So you can write on and on and you will not run out of space. So for example, I can just reduce the size of this uh, area here and move to this side here to just continue writing. And I can write here as well. I can draw some things. I can do a flow chart if I want to. And this can go on and on, which is something that I really enjoy about using this app. And this is a vector app, so you can zoom in all the way and the lines will still be very sharp. Downsides, there are no text editing features, so you cannot convert handwritten notes into editable text. There is no search. It's free to use, however, you have to pay to unlock all the tools. Backup is through OneDrive or Google Drive. Syncing is through OneDrive. Now there is a difference between backup and sync. So all the files here are backed up to Google Drive. If your computer crashes and you reinstall the app, you have to download all your files and import them into the app again.
again. With Microsoft OneDrive, there is backup and sync. So if your computer crashes and you reinstall the app, all your files will still be there. Another important thing to note is while this app is available on iOS, Android and Windows, the file format of the app on iOS is actually different compared to the file format of this app on Windows and Android. So if you create your notes on an Android tablet, you can actually open them with concepts on Windows, but not on your iPhone or iPad. So these are the five handwriting and note-taking apps I recommend. If you use any of them, let me know what you like or dislike about them. And if you have any other recommendations for good handwriting and note-taking apps, you can share with others in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye.